Welcome to the Morally End. My name is Mark Machado. I'm joined as always by Estelle Vazi Devon, Shrunker's number one journalist, uh, Nick Brooks, the doyen of Shrunken Cricket, and the professor of cricketology, Dominic Machado. It's um, our test series preview today. But before I do that, there's a few bits of housekeeping I have to tell you about. Firstly, for the Lord's Test, which starts middle of next week so in about 10 days from the point of releasing it uh we are doing kind of fan meetups every day at the end of play the three falcons pub around the corner from the home of cricket it's about a four minute walk away the food is brilliant if you're into indian food they do biryani they do uh butter chicken that i'll be indulging in most of those five nights and um, they do great beers not only that they're, they're trying to get lion in as well uh, there's going to be loads of special guests. Uh, me and Nick will be there. You'll be able to buy signed copies of Nick's book. Um, we've got lots planned to happen down there when you get down there. We'd love to see you um, come down and meet us and have a chat with us. So all the details are in the description. As well as that, we've also started a WhatsApp group as well. It's not a WhatsApp group, sorry. It's a WhatsApp channel. We keep it in exclusive content that we get hold of bits and pieces from wherever Sri Lanka are playing cricket, get posted into that. Little bits of news. It's a it's a growing community. Please do join it. Um, and on top of all that, that was enough for you. Me and Nick are going to, I think, almost every day of the test series um, as well. So if you see us around, make sure, or if you're going to one of those days, make sure you keep a short eat for me. Um, Nick's not as bad as I am, as you can tell from my size. And uh, come and do say hi if you see us around as well. We'd love to hear from you. Anyway, guys, let's jump straight into it. Um, Shrunker playing this warm-up uh, game at Worcestershire the first day and a half of two days didn't go particularly well. Um, Nick, we're going to Manchester on Tuesday. How are you feeling about the whole series at this point in time? I am really, really excited, Mark. You can't wait to get up to Manchester and to get around and into the test match. Although, uh, understandably, I'm feeling a little bit of trepidation, especially after what we saw on Wednesday. Sri Lanka blow, blown out for 139 by a pretty callow England Lions attack. Uh, the ball's moving around a bit. And I mean, look, some of these bowlers, they're inexperienced, but they're earmarked a few of them as potential future England players. But Sri Lanka's batters on the whole looked uh pretty unequipped to deal with probing lengths and the moving ball. Uh Today, they've just been batting again this morning and things have looked better. Nishan Madushka's made a really good start. He's 63, not out at lunch. But we've seen Kusal Mendes get another early one probing uh, ball sort of around fourth, fifth stump line. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I do think that this team will improve. They're still, you know, a lot of these guys have arrived in England this week and they're still finding their feet and adjusting to conditions. Uh, we don't know what kind of pitches we're going to get. We don't know what the weather's going to be like up in Manchester. It's been sunny down south, but there is forecast for a bit of rain. I think we've got to hope for clear skies and flat pitches because if the ball's wobbling around a bit and we've got Mark Wood and Gus Atkinson bowling quick, uh, it could be problematic for Sri Lanka's batsmen. Um, Estelle, me and Nick haven't made any plans for Saturday and Sunday next week um, <laughs> other than going to the cricket. Should we look at backup plans? I should say, I'll caveat this all with, I do have a ticket for Liverpool versus Brentford because I see 45 minutes away from Old Trafford um, on the Sunday evening. So I do have some plans. But are Sri Lanka going to be able to play five days of test cricket if they need to? Or is this game going to be wrapped up super early? They're going to have to put up a hell of a fight, right? If they want to um, survive the five days. I do think regardless of Sri Lanka, how Sri Lanka goes with baseball, you're expecting things to move along pretty quickly anyway. So I don't know whether the test will go on till the last day. But I think, uh, like Nick mentioned, it's a bit worrying the way the batting fell apart in the first innings. Um, and the second innings has been a lot better. So I hope they can put together something. It's very, it's an interesting thing, right? With the warm ups because it feels like you can't really read too much into mm. them. Um, but at the same time, you wouldn't want to see your team being bowled out for one thirty. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for some of those batters because if you look at the bowling lineup, none of them have played in England, but the batters, many of them have experience playing in England, right? So you would want guys like. 
Angelo uh, Chandimal and Dimut to really stand up. Dimut in particular, I think it's it's a massive opportunity for him to, you know, establish the fact that like, people talk about his record, but that's always that caveat that like, he he makes a lot of runs at home. He hasn't had a lot of success in difficult conditions like the UK. So it, it is a massive opportunity for him because, you know, he is one of the best test battles Sri Lanka has produced. So I, I hope they take it in that spirit, those three guys, because, you know, that they, they are going to have a massive role to play if Sri Lanka are to, you know, really challenge England in, in the games um, in this series. We'll definitely get into the bowling in a bit because there's a lot to talk about there, almost more so than the batting. Um, if you've made it this far, we're about five minutes into the show and you haven't hit the subscribe button, guys, you're absolutely killing me. Hit the subscribe, hit the follow, tell all your friends about it. Uh, we are the Marilly End. We put out loads of content about Sri Lankan cricket. It started off being once a week and now it's about three or four times a week, mainly because crazy stuff happens around our cricket team a lot. Um, Dom, we talked about Dimuth over there. We talked about Angelo. We talked about um, the experience in our batting lineup. This team, though, th- we haven't played a test in England in eight years. That's a heck of a long time. I mean, you t- you know, you- you're meant to kind of bring bring back muscle memory, but eight years, that that's, what, 882 captains in Sri Lanka? Um, yeah. <laughs> cricket standards. So, like, how much can we rely on these experienced players to, to, to get us the runs that we need? You know, it's, it's very hard, and I think... Um... You know, over the last year, they have not played much in the way of test match cricket. Anyway, um, they had the series in Bangladesh. And I'm trying to remember what was the last series that they played before that. Um, So I think it's been they played basically one test series over the last eight or nine months. I can say that fairly confidently. Did we not have a one off against Ireland? Uh, Afghanistan. 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 Afghanistan, sorry. But they haven't played outside of Asia since last March, I think. Yeah, since last March. Yeah. And then then before that, they hadn't played outside of Asia since they went to South Africa, like about 18 months before that. So as it stands, they're going outside of Asia kind of every kind of 18 months. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And then there was that New Zealand tour at the beginning of 23 Mm. that they had that they, you know, they 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 played pretty well. But. Um, this is a team that does not have a lot of current experience. We have a lot of multi-format players who have just been playing white ball cricket. I think it's it's going to be a tough task, especially that first test, to adjust to expectations for test cricket. I wonder if, to, to kind of go back to what Estelle said, whether Basball will give them a little bit of an opportunity to score runs um, in that if the pitches are flat, um, they'll be able to score runs fairly quickly, uh, whether they'll try to match the English tempo. Um, and I wonder if Sanath is thinking about that too, given his own experiences in England, thinking particularly about 1998. Um, so I think there's a lot of question marks as to what's the pitch going to look like? Is this going to be, you know, I think playing a game in Worcestershire and um, playing against the Lions, they're going to get a very different brand of cricket mm. than what they will get against Baz McCollum's England. So I think that all um, matters. But I think that also puts pressure. You know, if England score, you know, 350, 400 in a day and then declare and put Sri Lanka in, I think they will feel um, in two minds about it. Okay, we have to bat time. Or they'll say we have to be aggressive and try to score runs in a similar way. So I think it's going to be a lot of decision points for the batters. And I think one of the tricky parts is those batters who are playing multiple formats, how well will they have a game plan in their head about how they plan to attack the innings and how will they stick to it, right? I think that's a big part of it is being willing to stick through that game plan. If you say you're going to bat long, you got you can't just decide five minutes in, you know what, I'm going to be aggressive. Now, I think I think it's all about game planning. I think um, there's also going to be a lot of lack of clarity about who they're facing. The English bowling lineup is not the same. You know, I think the one guy who they will have faced decently frequently is Mark Wood. But even then, Mm -hmm. not particularly. Gus Atkinson is totally new to them. Wokes, they'll have some experience with if he bowls. um, But they wouldn't have faced the likes of Shoaib Bashir or anyone like that. So I think it's it's a matter of... um, you know, as with always with Sri Lanka batters, their mental preparation, how prepared are they, they, what plans do they have and how do they plan to execute them? And if they have a clear plan, I think they can be successful. They have the talent, they have the experience 
to do that. But I think there's a lot of unknowns and they're going to have to come in with a very clear mental game plan about how they hope to attack this um, first test. Uh, Nick, I'll come to you about this because you're in a unique position being living in the UK, a doyen of Sri Lankan cricket, but also a, a man who knows about the West Indies team as well because of your West Indian heritage. After and during and after the West Indies series, when they came over to England a few weeks ago, a lot of the discourse in the press was about what's happened to the great West Indies uh, test team. Why aren't they producing those kind of players anymore? Why isn't this West Indian team competitive? Are we, uh, and kind of, you know, from what I've been seeing in the press this week in the UK, it looks like they're kind of teared up to kind of regurgitate a lot of those same questions in the next few weeks. How would you compare, I don't want to say compare the state of these teams, because I think if you play Sri Lanka versus West Indies, in the West Indies or Sri Lanka, it's a totally different fixture. But how are these two teams compared in terms of being prepared to play cricket in England? Because I, I think the Sri Lanka side, at least with batting, is a lot more experienced in these conditions mm-hmm. than the West Indies are, right? Yeah, I mean, I think you'd have to say that that is the major difference, right? If you look at that West Indies top six, only really crag. Braithwaite had any kind of experience. Uh, you know, you look at the likes of Mikhail Lewis, Alec Athanase, um, all very experienced, very inexperienced. So I think Sri Lanka will feel more confident. I think the batting should go better than the West Indies did. I think on paper, you might say the West Indies attack had more thread, especially in that seam attack. But I think you'd probably say that they didn't live up to expectations, particularly the two Josephs, Shamar and Alzari. I mean, we just saw Shamar bowl a great spell against South Africa yesterday, but he looked pretty undercooked against Mm. England. Alzari uh, didn't really seem to have much rhythm and it was kind of up to Jaden Seals to carry that attack. Whereas I think what Sri Lanka should have going for them is that um, Vish was done really well in the county championship this year. Asith has played a bit for Knots last year and, you know, has been just great for Sri Lanka over the past 18 months. That third seamer slot is up for grabs. I was just thinking this morning, I know like injuries and actually sort of logistics of cricket won't allow it, but mm-hmm. wouldn't it be such a tantalizing prospect? And I'm sure I'll get pilloried for saying this, but if that third seamer was, you know, a Dilshan Madhushanka, or if you could get Matisha Paterana through <laughs> 10 over the day, um, you know, how difficult... Can't be- you- believe you hate CSK like that. Why would you I have mean, him to I, five yeah, days Okay, cricket? it would probably break him forever if he had to bowl uh, 10 overs on the bounce for three yeah, days. You hate I mean, wouldn't that just give this team like a feel of a bit of X factor going into this series? Mm-hmm. If you had, you know, Dilshan swinging the new ball or Matisha coming on first change, bowling 95 miles an hour, uh, that would be very exciting. And that's no slight on whoever the third seamer is, Kasten Rajita, Lahiri Kumara or Milan Ratnayaka. But um, yeah, I think that Vishwa and Asita can cause problems. And I hope that the batters can dig in and make England bowl long spells because, look, Mark Wood is not mm-hmm. a dissimilar guy to Matish Paterana, right? He doesn't want to have to bowl three spells a day for two, three days running. Gus Atkinson also bowls quick, how he can handle bowling long, hard spells. Um, so, you know, if I think there's an opening there. I, I think it'll be really interesting to see how they play Shah Bashir, if they can get after Bashir and put pressure on, I think, what looks likely to be a three-pronged pace attack. I think that the probably... Uh, we'll see a batter come in for Ben Stokes rather than an extra bowler because that's kind of how they played in the Ashes last year when Ben Stokes wasn't bowling. So I think that's a little opening for Sri Lanka that if they can get mm-hmm. after Bashir, um, make Oli Pope feel that he can't just tie down and end with his spinner and, um, you know, the, the quicks have to really um, keep charging in, then maybe that's somewhere where Sri Lanka can hurt England. I've still got nightmares of Don Bess. Um, <laughs> pieing the worst out at Hall. You've ever seen in Test cricket, right? Yeah. Yes, oh, nightmare, nightmare scenario. Estelle, the person we haven't mentioned is our spinner, the jewel in Sri Lanka's uh, <laughs> Test crowd. I think uh, Pramat Jayasuriya. Had how? how um, hey, have you ever met him? Have you ever talked to him? Like, what do you know about his personality? And, and you know, what can you tell us about whether or not he'll be relishing turning up into the uh, day one at Old Trafford? I haven't met him. I've seen him in press conferences. The only funny thing I can tell you guys is that they call him Papaya, like it's like grandpa, grandpa, <laughs> or like grandpa Aya kind of thing. 
and I used to laugh at it, and then I realized he's younger than me. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's also young. younger than most of the most of the batters as well, right? Like, is it? Chandy he's and not yet thirty, I think. Yeah, no, he's um, thirty-two, I think. So, yeah. Um, it, on his bowling, I think it's going to be interesting, right? Because he's got this huge record. But it's all been in goal. All the wickets have come in goal, right? And he's had like, I mean, he's going to have two more tests in goal in September. But before that, yeah. he has to kind of overcome the English challenge. And like you guys were discussing, right? Sri Lanka doesn't play in foreign conditions very, very often. So the opportunities are so few. It's going to be interesting to see how he kind of adjusts. I thought he's kind of bowled okay during uh, the Lions game. So that would be encouraging. The one plus I see is, again, with baseball, you're not expecting Sri Lanka to be in the field for five, six sessions, right? It's going to be maybe four uh, at the most because they're going to be looking to score quickly. So then you won't hopefully have to depend on Prabhat bowling like 60 overs um, yeah. in each innings. Uh, I think, you know what, like, he has the experience, right? He's he's bowled tons of overs in domestic cricket. Um, maybe the first game is not going to be when he kind of finds his stride. But I think by the second game, he should be, you know, uh, he should have a grasp of what he needs to do in these conditions and, you know, uh, trouble the English batters. Because, again, you know, we had bowlers like Ranganaherat who we thought, What's he going to do in England or, you know, in conditions like that? But with experience, he was able to kind of find ways of being effective. So I expect the same from someone like Prabhat. He's very accurate, you know, he, very consistent with his lines and length. So um, that will be, he's obviously going to be like the Trump card, right, for Sri Lanka? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, should we get into what we kind of predict the 11 for the first test will be? And then off the back of that, talk about where we think they might get something wrong. So I'm asking you to do the thing I always say that we can't really do, which is trying to predict what might happen in Shrunken Cricket. So predict what the 11 might be and then kind of talk about some of the positions that they might want to look at changing because it looks to me, firstly, the opener set seemed quite set with Dushka and um, Dimuth. The number three spot, as it stands, is Kissel, but he's not having a good time in um, in English conditions at the moment. Admittedly, it's only <laughs> one game. It's a warm-up game. They've only been here for about five days. He's only been here for about five days. Do you think that might be one of the places that they end up changing a, the, the player there, Nick? Because Patam is in this squad, right? Yeah, I actually do, only because um, I think we all had Kamindu locked on to about seven, right? But his visa was delayed. He's just arrived in England today, Friday. I don't think he's ever played a match in England before. As far as I can see from his record, I could, did a quick Google search and I couldn't see any reference to him playing club cricket here either. So, you know, to throw a guy in who's arrived in the country five days before the Test Series and hasn't played a match in England is a lot. You tie that to the fact that uh, Kosal hasn't looked entirely convincing during this warm-up match. Um, there were a lot of plays and misses in a short innings first time around and then another kind of similar dismissal probing um, second time around. So I wonder whether the um, impulse might be to move everyone down a slot so you go Patham at three, Kusal at four, Angelo at five, um, Chandy at six, DDS at seven, rather than bringing Sadira in or throwing uh, Kamindu into the fire. Uh, that, I think, is what I would be inclined to do. Uh, I think Patham, you know, he's been out of Red Bull squads for two years. I'm not entirely sure why he was dropped in the first place or if he was dropped, whether it was just like, let's let this guy focus on white ball cricket for a bit. But I think that, you know, considering how much we've seen him grow, how well he's batted over the past 12 months, the idea of him coming in at three for a test match in England is quite compelling. I'm really excited about it. I think it's a really great idea. Obviously, I have had to live through various um, different iterations of white ball specialists playing for England and it turning out to be an absolute <laughs> disaster in test matches. Um, but I, I think Patham is a real special talent. I think 
you know, we, we've talked a lot about him on this podcast in the last kind of six months or so, <clears throat> even beyond that, actually, because, you know, th- there's always nothing new I can say about it, but every series he gets better and better and better. Um, I don't, I assume he seems to me like the kind of guy who could probably change his batting to, because he has to bat outside himself to score quickly. So maybe this is more kind of, I don't want to say his natural game, but the game he expects to play at international cricket to play a slower, a slower level of it. What do you think, Dom? I, I kind of disagree. I, I'm, I'm not, I, I feel in two ways about it. Obviously the idea of Potham, the test player is very appealing to me, given his form, given his technique, given how good he is. Um, but putting someone in at three in conditions they've basically never batted in before. And Sri Lanka has always had a tough time finding a three who can deal with the conditions in England. Even, even Sangha, it took him till his final tour to score 100, right? He didn't have a very good record in England. Three is a very, very difficult position to bat. Um, and, you know, because early wickets often fall in, in these tours. So you're coming out to face the new ball. Um, you can't play your game. You kind of have to have it dictated to you. It takes a lot of experience to do it. It takes a lot of know-how. And um, part of what I think Sri Lanka has done so well with, especially with Potham, is backing him in a position to play well and play his game no matter what. So unless you're ready to give him that three position for the next three or four years, I think it's not necessarily a move you want to toss him into. Um, I wonder as well how it'll affect his, you know, sort of what, what the mode is in terms of how do I play this as a white ball player who is now playing red ball cricket because he does not play much domestic red ball cricket anymore because he's constantly on tour with Sri Lanka. Um, and, you know, say what we want about Kusal Mendes, like he's not, he's not a great number three. No one's going to make that argument that he's a great number three, but we know He's capable of doing the job. And I, if I if I were to bring in Nisanka, there's an argument for maybe bringing him in a little bit lower down. Um, bringing it, he, he played at six, I think, um, for a little bit early in his career. Um, and that might be a place where you can bring him in that's a little bit pressure off situation because three um, is, a, is a big ask. So I, I'm very excited about Nisanka the player. Um, but I think you have to be willing to commit to the Sunka at three, if you're going to put him in there um, because okay, we can't expect him to go out there and just figure out English conditions. There's been no Sri Lankan batter, maybe outside of Siddharth Wethamuni, who has got it right the first time or, and Dilup Mendes as well, which Mark, I'll let you plug that, that in a little bit, but um, yeah, we, I, I think we need to be very careful with him and I want to see him go from strength to strength and he's an asset that needs to be protected. So I'm a little weary of just plugging him in at three. Um, that is a great opportunity, Dom. You teed us up perfectly to come <laughs> in and, and uh, finish off this this plug, uh, which I will hand over to Nick because in the coming days, we've got something really exciting dropping across all our channels, don't we, Nick? We do indeed, Marky. Yesterday, we had the privilege of being joined by uh, the two legends, Dalit Mendes and Siddharth Wetamuni, for a kind of 40-year retrospective on that 1984 test when they both got hundreds and took England to the cleaners. Uh, They are two incredibly lovely gentlemen, and uh, we had a really interesting chat, and so I can't wait for everyone to hear it. It's really good. You're going to absolutely love it. If you... um... If you want to get that first, remember to hit subscribe and and that alarm, that bell as well. <laughs> then it will just pop up as soon as we publish that. Estelle, you've got the cast and vote here. Pat him the sun in at three, pushing Kusil Mendes down one, or you you keeping him out the side? And, and if you are keeping him out the side, can you explain to me why you take one of our best white ball cricketers, a, a man who's constantly playing cricket, on a three week holiday to uh, to England? It's an interesting one. I think I I'm. I tend to go with what Dom was saying about, you know, pushing him at number three might be, uh, might not be the best thing if it's going to be short term, right? You want to give a player assurance that this is their spot and this is the role they need to play. Um, To be honest, I feel like they took him as a backup for Nishan Madushka. And I would rather have Kamindu if, I mean, 
if there's no issue with his fatigue and stuff because he obviously traveled late to England mm. i think they have to stick with him i mean he hasn't done much wrong in test cricket right to be left out so i feel like that's the direction they will go with at least for the first test um where you have your you know your first 11 playing your your first choice uh seven batters playing and then make a decision based on you know how they go in that first game or second game because I understand your point about why would you take Patum if you're not going to play him, which is fair. And he's a very exciting prospect, right? Like I've seen, I've been lucky enough to see him back in Test cricket live, and it just uh, when you were talking about his natural game, I do think Test cricket is what he was born to play, right? Unfortunately. The game as a whole has moved beyond that for countries like Sri Lanka, where white ball is the focus. So you have to make the most of players like Patum by kind of letting him focus on that. But um, I think, you know, in another, in a parallel universe where test cricket was everything, he could be an all time great for Sri Lanka. He's that good. He's just such a natural with the bat, the way he plays. Um, so I'm going to say all that and then say he should probably not start in the first game. Um, Nishan Madhushka has obviously played really well in the in the Lions game, right? So you can't leave him out. Kamindu, if there is an issue with fatigue, maybe that's the only reason why I would, I would skip past him. But otherwise, I would be having him at number seven. Um, should we have a quick chat about Chandy, Angelo, and DDS because they're kind of three fixtures in this side. Um, we, we're not in that Angelo needs to get out the the te- test team era at the moment, but I'm sure you know w- with the kind of circus that is Angelo Matthews, that is coming down the road <laughs> at some stage. The, these two have been fairly consistent performers in in uh, Red Bull cricket for Shrunk for quite a while now. They um, th- they're they're our experience. They're our, they're our engine. But the problem, I think that the kind of big issue for me is, is that they just have, and it's not their fault, we just haven't, we're not playing enough test cricket, right? So the kind of stage of their career that they're at when they should be kind of imperious, they're having to use the first test almost as a, as a warm-up game and then kind of hope that they can get big scores in the in the second and third test. Was it a bit of a mistake to have, to not, for these, those, well, I suppose all three of them could have come, come earlier and tried to get a bit of county cricket in? beforehand Nick yeah I would have loved to see all three of them playing county cricket but you're right Marky they've done really well over the past uh couple of years I mean I was a little bit surprised when I looked down the list of this squad and if Sri Lanka start with Kamindu and Madushka which we think they will six of this top seven everyone apart from Kusal is now averaging north of 40 and I mean Angelo I think and Chandimal would be averaging way above that over the past couple of years right Angelo Chandamal and DDS all have a test 100 this year, uh, which is impressive considering Sri Lanka have only played three tests. They're definitely the engine room of Sri Lanka's batting in that middle order. Um, Angelo and Chandy both have test 100s here. So, you know, DDS hasn't played a test in England yet, but I think he was part of that squad in 2016. So, you know, it's been a long time, but they've all got experience and I think something that could be really relevant is, you know, Sri Lanka are used to coming to England in May and June and coming up against, you know, or playing on green seamers in conditions that can be a bit cool, can be a bit cloudy, can favour the swinging ball. We've had a pretty hot, dry August, so we could be looking at flat pitches which are, are dry batting friendly and then start to take a bit more turn on days four and five, which I think these players would be a lot more comfortable with. Uh, so, I mean, look, we don't know what we're going to get. I do have fears. I mean, that Mark Wood spell of the la- on the last day of the West Indies series where he was just bowling, you know, high 90s and blew the West Indies away. I think something like that could happen to Sri Lanka. But equally, if they get a flat pitch, who's to say that this batting lineup can't make K? Because all of these guys have scored a lot of runs in Test cricket. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because I, I think, actually, if this Test series was played anywhere else other than England, you'd say it's 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 a pretty tough one to call, right? If it, if they were playing it even in South Africa or Australia, well, I suppose in Australia, it's more, more bends to kind of England's favour because they play so much cricket there. But, um, 
you know, if this was an Asia, you'd say it's a tough series to call. It's just the it's just the conditions, especially with the way England play cricket. I think basketball gives you opportunities to to yeah. kind of get at them. They almost invite you in to come and play your your to put your best foot forward, as it were. Um, and I think Sri Lanka naturally would kind of relish that. You just, I just hope that we're not undercooked. I'm a, I'm a pretty optimistic Sri Lanka fan, right? But I just, I'm a little bit nervous about this. Maybe, maybe suddenly, I'm, this is the realism that I need. Estelle will tell me this is this is the, what, how I should be for every series, uh, not just assume Sri Lanka <laughs> win every World Cup and every major tournament that we enter. Um, because I think it's fair to say you look at this squad and it's like. There's a lot of established test cricketers here. There's a lot of people who, who are who are experienced test cricketers who've pl- you know who can score runs, who can get wickets. Um, my my main worry when they come over here actually isn't the batting. It's are we going to be able to get twenty wickets? Who is going to get the wickets early on in the first, second, and you know third day? Um, Dom, do Asitha and Vishra have give us enough firepower? It's this is a really hard one. I mean, when you look at the eleven, right? So I'm, the seven batters we've just talked about, right? Whichever combination they go with, plus Prabath, Vishwa, Asita, and then some one of Kumara, uh, Rajatha, and Milan. Well, we know how you know we know how this story begins and ends, right? Like all our yeah. ICC what, uh, World Cup. Endeavors last few years, you start with La- Laru and end with uh, Rajatha, right? That's yeah. how it always. <laughs> There's a hamstring in is. there, and just yeah. hope that it's not on the first day of the first day of the test. But yeah, I, you know, I think this is a lineup that's built to play tests in South Asia because you have spin options, right, in your batting lineup. But barring Angelo rolling his arm over, you don't really have any fast bowling all round options and you have to rely on three seamers and Prabath basically to bowl what 30 to 40% of the overs um, just as a holding option, not even if he's going well. Um, So I'm a little worried about if they don't make inroads early, this could be a very, very long um, day in the field for them. Right, I think I, I think that um, Asita is a champ is is a champion bowler. He'll come back and bowl spell after spell after spell. He's ideal for Test cricket in that sense. He's good um, when the ball goes old and you're looking for some reverse swing. You have to bowl Yorkers or you have to um, you know bend your back and bowl bouncers. Vishwa, I think, is going to be key if he can get swing early on and get through some of those England batters early. That will make a huge difference. Um, and then that third seamer role, I think, you know, I think Sri Lanka might, one reason why they might not go with Kumara is because they might need the overs. Um, Kumara, you can kind of bowl in three, four over spurts um, three times, you know, over the course of a day. But you might go to Rajatha if you're looking for a little bit of a longer, longer spell there. And, um, and again, it depends on what they expect from the pitch. I think if it's a deader pitch, you might look to Kamara to provide the pace and the bounce. Um, if it's a pitch where it's going to move, Rajatha might be a better option uh, because we know he can get the ball to swing early. Uh, it's kind of a shame because I think back to we how good Saranga Lakmal was at the end of his career and how well he would have performed in conditions like this. But um, I think he was in the 16 squad, but he didn't re- get get many chances to play in England um, to make the best use of those skill set. But I'm a little worried that they'll be able to get 20 wickets. I think they need to perform really well up front. I think they're going to have to make good use of that new ball. And I think they're going to have to be tactical. I think they're going to have to scheme their way to get these England batters out. Um, as Estelle and Nick said, um, you know, take advantage of the openings that Basball gives you, right? Maybe set up a short ball ploy and try, you know, be willing to leak runs for a little bit if it's going to produce a top edge and, and a wicket. So I think they need to be um, aggressive and inventive if they're going to want to take 20 wickets or hope that, you know, it starts spinning quite a bit early on. Estelle, have we got 20 wickets in us? It's an interesting one again, right? Because... Any other time, I would have advocated for having Lahiru Kumar in the side because you've got to have that pace, right? Because we kind of, just how England have been playing, you expect them to give you a flatter track. 
um and then you do need that guy who can produce something out of nowhere but we haven't seen kumar in in a while now right and we don't know where he is at in terms of his rhythm his speed i mean speed is the factor that you're considering him for right but if he's bowling high 130s and uh, low 140s that doesn't really do much for sri lanka so that um he that selection for the third seam is going to be really interesting on a flat pitch kasun rajita is going to be uh very difficult to accommodate on the side in the side right so i think it all depends on how kumara is feeling um i would i mean i would always advocate for him in the 11 um but it's just that we haven't seen him at all the 20 wickets <laughs> I mean baseball is going to give us opportunities I'm sure I think Joe Root is going to be the big one right for Sri Lanka mm-hmm. he's made a lot of runs against us in Sri Lanka um he's you know, I mean this extended purple patch in test cricket um so he's going to be the big wicket like Dom said the new ball is going to be crucial I think if Asita and Vishwa can put in a couple of good spells and containment is going to be important as well right because we've seen how england you know feeds off scoring at 5 to 6 runs and over going after the bowling so if you can contain them opportunities will come but um yeah it's going to be tough i think they're going to have to be really really good and really consistently good because if you go for like a 150 or 120 run session that's going to be a real dampener dampener for the side right so mm-hmm. they're going to have to be really good to pick up those 20 wickets um over the course of the test um does anyone i'm just throwing this out there cuz i was surprised by his inclusion and i don't know anything about it so anyone know anything about atharika who's come in as one of the the bowling options as a He- 33 year old Yeah, I think he's had good run in domestic cricket of late uh and can swing the ball a bit. But I uh, and, he, and he bats yeah. a bit, right? He's got a first class yeah. 100. Yeah. Can bat as well. So he's that he's the he's the fast bowling all-rounder Dom was talking about, right? Like the Sri Lanka don't have. Uh I don't see him getting into the 11 at any point unless I mean like <laughs> we've discussed, right? Sri Lanka generally wants to have lots of injuries during a tour like this. So <laughs> unless there are a few injuries, I don't see him getting into the 11, but um, yeah, has had a good run in domestic cricket from what I know. Yeah. And and you know how valuable those bowling all-rounders can potentially be. I remember Dawson Shanaka uh, made his test debut in 2016 and he took what like three wickets in his first five balls uh in in um in his first match so having those dibby dobblers so maybe maybe angela will turn over his arm and they'll and maybe they would as well that. right oh yeah yeah <laughs> to, yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> um, he, he he took the wicket of who was it was it pujara or kohli that he took the wicket of i can't remember is it pujara did he get pujara's wicket yeah one of the is- major indian batters yeah Um and do you think we'll see Milan play as well at some point? I thought Milan bowled really well on the first evening having gone for 15 in his first over. I yeah. think he came back and bowled about four overs for four runs, got a wicket, um consistently put the ball in a nice area while getting some of that shape away from the right-hander and I feel like he bowled himself into contention. Uh but I think if there are swinging conditions they'll probably just about still favor Rajita over him uh yeah. i agree with so much of what Estelle and Dom said but i am worried about Kumara that he didn't look that great in the first innings at Worcester went at over fives and i do worry that if the this baseball lineup batting lineup gets after him and um you know he leaks runs that it could leave Sri Lanka a little short-handed yeah it it kind of I don't know. Well, it's not really an oversight because as it stands Sri Lanka are averaging kind of, you know, a test series you know, once every kind of decade at this point, right? Mm-hmm. So because it kind of feels like we're kind of undercut to a a fast bowler as in somebody's ready for for kind of test cricket in these conditions. But then also, I mean, why why should SLC put resources in something that happens so infrequently, right? Um there's so much else going on in cricket and also other formats of the game are so lucrative 
it's I think it'd be a really difficult sell to get, you know, Pathorano or New and Tishra and be like, we want you to to start dabbling in Red Bull cricket for the time that we go to England and Australia once, you know, once every six or yeah. seven years. You're like, that's just ridiculous, right? So I kind of feel that if we're having this conversation about what Sri Lanka might do in this test series, you kind of if if they if they do end up getting, you know, skittled out twice um in you know if the, if the test series if the test match is finished within three days every time then that's partly the make of the ecb right yeah. because ultimately they've got to invite us over more frequently if they want us to be competitive over here they maybe need to look to you know i said this when the west indies were here they should have got as many of those test players playing county cricket at the back end of last year and right at the beginning of this year as they possibly could have to get used to playing over here because, you know, we're obviously we're all fans. We have a bias towards Sri Lanka, but ultimately we all want to see a good competitive game. Right. And the, the situation around it, it's not really, there's no real incentive for teams like Sri Lanka and the West Indies to, to care too much about whether or not their two or three test matches that they get in England every decade end up being five days long. Right, or end up being competitive. It's it's really low down the the kind of pecking order. Or am I being really really unfair and missing something over here? Because I keep saying this, repeating this to people, and thinking I must be the bad guy here. I must not be understanding something. Am I? Is there something I'm missing, Nick? No, I don't think there is, Marky. I think it's um, totally fair. Everything you've said. The one thing I would say is that, like, I think whenever this series comes around, and eight years is the longest gap since Sri Lanka got Test status. Uh, I think there's a feeling from everyone who supports Sri Lankan cricket that it is a really important series uh, and that it means a lot and that they want to stand up and show that they can do well in England. Um, But obviously, you're right, you can't build your cricket around something which happens once every eight years. Uh, The one thing I would say is, I mean, I know we're coming with a little bit of pessimism before the series has started, right? But England do have issues of their own... uh, you know, Dan Lawrence is going to open the batting, something that he hasn't done regularly in county cricket. Ollie Pope is a rookie captain who's going to lead the side. And whether he can commit to baseball in the same way that Ben Stokes has uh, will be really interesting to see. And then, you know, it's three back-to-back tests. So we're not going to get Mark Wood and Gus Atkinson in all three. And whether there's a chance to go after some inexperienced backup bowlers in the form of, um, who is it, Matt Potts and Ollie Stone, uh, you know, that's going to be interesting. And the other thing I would say that's worth mentioning is I think Prabath could really benefit from England's impulse to relentlessly attack him. And I know we've said that maybe he doesn't have the variation and craft to thrive when pitches aren't as favourable, but it looked to me in the warm up like he was bowling a bit quicker, a bit flatter, and that maybe just that variation between the one that turns and the one that goes straight on, you know, if you've got guys who are really coming at you, um, can be enough to pick up some cheap wickets. Yeah, it's. I think it's quite an interesting time to play England. I will. The one thing I will say about the the kind of England side is I am a little bit gutted that um, Jimmy isn't playing this. Not for any kind of Sh- Sri Lankan reasons, and it's it's unlikely for me to show sentiment towards any other cricket team. Uh, I mean, as we all know, there's there's cricketing nations whose name I just refuse to mention. Um, but I think it would have been nice for Jimmy to have ended his career playing at playing at Old Trafford, right? This could have been his last test, um, and it's a shame. And that he, w- I think, it's a bit of a shame he wasn't given that opportunity because I think he looked in the West Indies in the first test he did play, when the last test he did play, which was the first test of that series, he looked like he could have carried on a little bit, um, bit longer. But hey, Shrunker fans might get to see him in the LPL next season, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> we don't need to be too sentimental. Uh, and they might reel him out Old Trafford to like drink a pint on the balcony again or something like that. We could, we hope. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great, isn't it? Uh, we, I, I've got a mutual friend with him who lives in Manchester as well. So, so maybe they, uh, Tommy, might introduce me to him as well. So you know, you never know. He might pop up on the early end while we're there. Who knows? Um, Estelle, should we should we do kind of predictions of what we think uh, oh, might no. happen for the for this three match <laughs> series? Or do you want to leave it? I'm happy not saying anything. I'm re- no. like, it's, we, it's interesting. We, we, what if we make predictions, so. we're going to get hammered in the comments, aren't we, Nick? 
Yeah, we're going to get hammered, but you know I'm going optimistic nonetheless. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just going to go out and do it because I do it every time. And why not? What have I got to lose? No one cares what I think anyway. It's going to be three 0 to Sri Lanka. Total whitewash. Total, <laughs> true, a total disaster. A total rethink of English cricket. Uh, Baz McCullum will be out of a job and probably end up getting Sandler's job because uh, that's what happens. The, the famous England to Sri Lanka coaching pipeline. Uh, um, yeah, it's. I think it's clear and obvious. All right, I'm going to be not that quite that optimistic, but I'm going to say we're going to get a heavily rain affected draw at Manchester a bit because. Uh, Manchester's famously rainy. That's what happened the last time England played there. And Marky and I have arranged to go up and book the hotel. So it's like sod's law that the first test we cover live as the Murley end is going to be uh, a damp squib. I think England will then win at Lords, and Sri Lanka will channel the spirit of Sanath and 1998 at the Oval and we're going to get a one-all test series. Oh, that'd be glorious, wouldn't it? <laughs> Because <laughs> like, you imagine Prabath has a, a Murali esque. Yeah, Prabath uh, gets, you know, whatever, 16 wickets. wickets yeah, yeah, I can't wait to hear the commentator say his name, right? Yeah, yeah. I, we already got oh, Jai Soraya. Do, do you know what we should do before we end, Estelle? Is I should get you almost as a tradition when. Um, with with a shrunker squad, you should. I should get you to read out. Always finish. You the know podcast. the last the last time I did I it, there were people commenting <laughs> that this name is wrong. You have to. <laughs> so, uh, no, yeah. people can Google the name. Thank you. <laughs> fine, um, but fine, still, we're going to need your prediction as well. You're not getting off the hook yeah. here. You know what? I think. Um, I think Sri Lanka. It won't be three nil. Which is a, which is a what a lot of people will predict for Sri Lanka to lose three 0 not win three 0 I think Sri Lanka have a real chance of winning at least one game because of the way England play, right? Because they give you opportunities to get yourself in the game. If the if those batters can get some runs, I think yeah, two one or one all. I think the the rain in Old Trafford. I mean, if they could somehow use that if we could somehow get some more batting practice in <laughs> and a no result i don't think it would necessarily be the worst thing in the world for mm. for shrunk cricket no i think selfishly we'd hate to see it right but also be quite happy yeah. to see it uh it would be yeah because yeah. it isn't predicted to rain a lot next week so um yeah so maybe if you've got any recommendations for you know for things to do when there's no cricket, when it's wet in, in Manchester, leave them in the comments because me and Nick might have a lot of time on our hands. Um, it's fine. I love going to the cinema, so don't worry about me. Um, <laughs> guys, should we leave it there? If you've gone all this way through and you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you are planning to come to the Lord's Test, come and see us afterwards, have a drink with us. You don't need to have a ticket to turn up to that event. Um, it is just a pub that has no affiliation to the stadium so you could just come down if you're just watching at home in the afternoon or just after you finish work come down watch the the uh, final overs of the game there and then we'll, we'll pop down soon afterwards and uh, we'll have a jolly old knees up no doubt um this has been the morally end um thank you for listening thank you for watching tell everyone you know about us we'll be back soon bye <laughs>